Council member, Water Management and Plumbing Skill Council. She has 25 years of building service consulting experience and has worked as a design engineer with successfully designed systems for numerous projects. She has been also closely involved as design engineer, project management consultant for large projects contributing to design coordination and innovation of MEP services, design of projects like American Embassy School, Crown Plaza Hotel, Tirupati Airport, Grand Hospital, and many more. Our second speaker for the day, Mr. Vinay Gupta, CMD, Aqua Viva Group, Vice Chairman, Water Management and Plumbing Skill Council. He is a technocrat from IIT Delhi and has been manufacturing premium range of tap wires and bathware since last 46 years. He commenced the first ever production of single lever maxes with ceramic cartridges of the year 1986 in India and has a distinction in manufacturing them in India and exporting back to European countries. Next speaker for the day, Major General T.K. Chadda, who is COO of Water Management and Skill Pumbling Council. T.K. Chadda retired as after serving 37 years of active service in Indian Army. He took part in 1971 Indo-Pak War in Rajasthan sector. Also joining us today is Mr. Kaushik Jingan, who is a hospitality consultant with Avivana Associates Private Limited. May I please request everyone to settle down? We are about to start the session. May I please request everyone to settle down? May I please request everyone to settle down? Can I request everyone to please settle down? Nitin sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Could I request everyone to settle down so we can start this session? Thank you so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you all here and be talking about something that's going to be very important for us, especially in the future, water management. And we have an illustrious panel with us today. They've already been introduced. And I'll start straight away because I think we're short on time and there's another se session after this. So to Shruti ji, for the first per person I would like to put forward the question to and start the whole discussion. You've been a consultant and you've been working in this industry for a long time. What are the challenges that you face, especially using Indian products in the hospitality sector? Actually, uh, specifically if I talk of hospitality, whatever is visual, whatever is visual is never Indian, except probably bathtubs or very few Indian manufacturers are approved or uh, uh, approved by the hospitality industry. They are all foreign manufacturers with imported products which are coming in. But obviously the back ends which we design, uh, the pipes and every the pumps and everything, mostly are made in India, but by foreign vendors. 
but uh, we should encourage uh, Indian vendors also if they have the right uh, information and certifications available, we would like to use the Indian vendors. As a follow-up question, I wanted to ask, is the quality of the Indian vendors up to the mark? You feel it's good enough? Quality is up to the mark, but since there is not too much certification, when we talk of certification, there is only CPRI test or BIS test certifications. Sometimes the uh, product which is tested is not what is sold in the market. So uh, that guarantee, if it's uh, taken care of by the Indian manufacturers, the quality is good. And you would expect the guarantee to come from the manufacturer or the order? From the manufacturer, the right uh, details to be available, technical details to be available. Okay, so that automatically leads me to my next question. Uh, Vineji, you are the expert in this line. You have been exporting and importing uh, products from all over the world, in fact, the best quality products and selling them in India. So what has been, and you have been very hugely successful in that. So what is your mantra for success for a start? Why do you share it with our audience? Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Very rightly, what Shruti has said, the, you know, we have been a very successful company in producing in India and using these products in the major hotels. As you rightly the mantra is that, you know, you have to be little more aggressive in manufacturing the right quality. The only way a consultant or a hoteler would get confidence is what Shruti has said, that you must have international certifications for your products. Once you have international certifications, like we went in for certifications for RAS, we went in for certification for CUPC, NF, NSF. So once you have your products which are certified, then there would not be any problem for a uh, hoteler to use your products in, the, in their projects. Because today, the kind of monies which go for a hotel is very, very huge. You're talking about 400 crores, 1,000 crore projects. So they do not want to take a risk with any product which will not perform. And being in the hospitality industry, the customer satisfaction is the most important. What we did was, when we started production, we ensured that we make first the quality as per international standards. We have to get the equipments which are being used in Germany or other countries. That's what we did. And moreover, we ensured that instead of importing the products, what has happened is in the last 20 years, we've been exporting without, because being an NDA, we cannot disclose the name of the leading uh, brands. They used to buy from us, put their own brand and get it back to India. And once then not even India, they've been using our, the products in various countries. So for our advice, our Amanta for the manufacturers is that please go in for international manufacturing practices, good uh, quality controls, good quality assurance, and uh, fantastic after sale service. You have an advantage here vis-a-vis -vis the foreign products. Today, for them to service the product in India is a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Suppose any plumbing product goes bad, for any foreign brand to respond, it takes probably a week. At times, earlier times, when we're talking about 90s and 93, where the import was 180%, there was no retailer stocking the foreign brands. Only hotels could import because they could do it in EPCG. There was zero percent duty for them. We manufactured a product to international standards and our response time was probably two hours or four hours. So in a hotel industry, a room not sold for the night is gone. So we ensured that no room is ever unsold because of the plumbing products. We have had instances when there were, you know, a lot of hotels had marriage functions. And when we manufactured single liver mixers way back in 87, it was a challenge for people to use a single mixer. They were not aware whether you to lift it or to they should use it as a press, press tap so the liver is to break. 
where instances, you know, we can recall as back as 87 in a Sea Rock Hotel in Mumbai, there's a marriage function. And one night before, somebody broke the single level mixer. So we could ensure that within two hours it was fixed. If it was a foreign product, probably they had to rechange the whole products. So that is what we say is that, and uh, you have to have a right production technique. And then we also took over that whatever is not being manufactured in India, we should manufacture that. Like we started with single mixers, thermosat mixers, bathtubs, whirlpools, jacuzzis. Everything had safety features in it. We ensured that every product of ours is as per the world specifications. The other advantage I must say for the Indian companies is that, you know, India has got different types of water. You will find Calcutta with iron, Delhi with calcium, the different kind of water issues. Whereas the world over, the water quality is very good. And there, the specifications for DIN and uh, US standards are only 0.8, uh, the uh, nickel thickness is only 6 microns, whereas in India, though the BA specifies 10, but we took over to microns of 13 to ensure that the, it withstands the water quality of India, which it's like a McDonald's, they will not change their process overseas, they will do this way they are doing it. We had instances when people imported products and they had major issues in uh, replating. So there was no one available. So we had been, uh, so far I would say, as a good success story for giving to major five-star hotel chains in India. Thank you. I, I just want to add to one question, uh, one thing which he said in his talk that we have a quality, water quality issue as far as different areas are concerned. It should not be if you are maintaining your water treatment plant properly. So finally it all comes down to quality. Yes. That my first question to you to was... Be, it has to be design quality, installation quality and most important is maintenance quality. If you are not maintaining the system, you cannot use the system however nicely it has been designed or however good the product is. Okay, I'm not from the water management part of the design fraternity. I'm an interior designer, but I worked with the hospitality industry for 25 years. I have something that I'd like to ask all of you, maybe um, two gentlemen who have not yet spoken. When I used to design hotels maybe 10 years ago, we would get a manual from the foreign designer. Hotels have this tendency of having a foreign designer, pay him an arm and a leg and a kidney, and uh, pay him a lot of money and give, get a design, and then come to India and ask people like us, up design development kar dije. And in that design development, we had to, we ended up with a lot of foreign brands which, for which we had to find Indian counterparts. Sir, the system is still the same. We have a foreign designer who will give you the concept, Yes. And then there will be an Indian designer who will do the Indianization of that particular design. Absolutely. So that happens in interiors. I'm that sure happens it happens in interiors. That does not happen in MEP. Thankfully, because MEP, international consultants, if you hire one, they don't know our Indian norms or our Indian work culture, our water performance, our electricity, our uh, air, condi air conditioning worldwide is same. But that brings me to my next important question is, how do you do import substitution then? Then you are stuck with a foreign brand, you have to use it. The, that's what I'm saying, that India, as an Indian, Indian interior designer, you have to do Indianization of that particular product range. Otherwise, they will specify uh, imported lights, imported uh, CP fittings, yes. everything is imported. But then, is there a ROI on those products when you using the, doing that much of high investment into a, uh, a, a, a guest room, will you be able to get that money into back into the system? Will you be able to earn that much? You will not be. So you have to do Indianization. Vinayji seems to be ready to answer this yeah, question. I would like to, Shruti, you're right. But I'll give you a simple, you know, uh, 
in my experience working with major hotels in India, they do get specifications from overseas. We are, you know, we have, let's even if you look at the Grand Maratha or Grand Central. Be, be, you know, say they are the leading brand in the country. So they used to come with the uh, design. You should tell them this design will not work. This is why I said this is designed for a because a lot of time the designers were from UK. They were in a low pressure system. And India, when you are doing a hotel, is anyway is pressurized. So we used to substitute the product to their standards and we have got and we were fortunate. And Indian companies are really fortunate that when they saw the products, designs and we got a lot of hotels outside the country. So, you know, we would always, you know, the, we always keep telling people, please take the challenge. And that is what we do. Now we see the whole world is changing after COVID. Earlier, China became the largest produ producer of goods. And all of a sudden, and all the supply chain, they only always wanted two suppliers. And unfortunately, they were all from China. And when the COVID came, they said, no, we must have the second supplier from a different country. And what we have, so now, so, so, uh, India is coming up as the largest manufacturing hub and the government is backing up the industry in a big way. I think we should forget about the, um, uh, the hotels are changing in the minds. We had a panel discussion earlier also, you know, as long as the quality is good, what Shruti said, certified, there is no reason why the Indian products can not be used in the hotel industry. I would like, anyways, uh, what I thought was, I would put it, the, your, your topic, the other way around. The challenging for Indian companies to convince the hotels why to use Indian uh, made products. <laughs> and back on the topic of quality, we've talked about quality of products. What about the quality of workmanship? Uh, uh, Delsa, I want you to answer that. Uh, what are we doing about the quality of skilled workmen in India? I must tell you that what you see in, across the country in the hotel industry, the quality which is produced on ground is often excellent. But I must tell you that the best of the plumbing products, if they are not installed properly, they can get ruined. So it is very important to understand the skill sets. As far as our country is concerned, there has never been a formal system of skilling, especially the water technicians, plumbers, carpenters, electricians. But now after 2014, you can say, a formal system has emerged in which a plumber who starts at level two can do PhD in plumbing. So the government of India has taken tremendous measures in this field and they have connected it with our education system. The way we do a 10th class, 12th class, and do PhD through our system of education, in the similar manner, now about a year back, the government of India issued directions that you can do PhD in the skilling field also. Like a plumber or electrician or a carpenter who starts his career in the skill system from ITI can reach up to PhD. And the systems are now in place and the equivalence has also come in. We have a large number of unorganized skill force, both in the plumbing, water technician, carpenter sector. And these guys are, have learned this on the job training from a start to a chela. And this now is being, has been recognized. I must uh, uh, thank our vice chairman, Mr. Vinay Gupta, and our chairman, Dr. R.K. Somani who started this process of recognition of prior learning. You see, our industry came forward in the plumbing and they started in the CS CSR system, skilling of, uh, recognizing of plumbers who are already working in the field. They have no formal education. So when you test the skills of a person, if he is of level three, that means equivalent to 10th class pass of a formal education system. If he gets level four, 
he is equivalent to 12th class pass of our education system so this have now become a parallel system which is now reconnected with each other with the result a plumber who has never gone to school can get a 10th class certificate from government of india 12th class and as he progresses he can do phd in that so this is an excellent system which have been started as far as our council is concerned we have already certified and trained 2.5 lakh plumbers oh. and also our system is so set now that we have made job roles curriculums nurses performance of each nurse of each activity has been streamlined we have made curriculums we have made contents and what as of now we are finding and trying to overcome this challenge that we have less number of trained trainers trainers are there in the field but their skills need to be upgraded enhanced and we are now working on capacity building program and the government of india and nsdc national skill development corporation we have joined hands to bring up the quality of our trainers if the trainer is good certainly we will have a good output and i tell my trainers that when you start training produce 30 plumbers in a period of 6 months of your same caliber what you are so that he can go into the market pick up his tool box and earn his rozi roti and can stand on his two feet and take care of his family so these are the challenges which are coming up but we are overcoming the challenges and the government has come in a big way national skill development corporation and 37 over skilling ssc council have come forward in all trades and as our prime minister has given a mantra to the whole nation that india will become a skilled hub for the complete world so we are moving towards that it's a slow process but we are on the right path and i assure the hospitality industry that water management plumbing and fire fighting is 12% of your complete sector so we want to join hands with you in such a manner that we move together and give you the skilled manpower you need in the future thank you very much thank you major sir and finally i jigan ji aapse the last closing remarks from you what do you see as the future of this industry you we've talked about quality of products quality of skilled workmen what is the future of this industry hello good evening sir after most of the things has been said about the industry and the products the question from where we started that what are the challenges using indian indigenous products versus imported products there is no issue the issue basic lies is the coordination we are not clear what we want even if i tell you the owners the entrepreneurs they themselves are not clear what they exactly want pardon me saying it even if they have to tell to the interior designer architecture ki what is their theme what is their objective they are not clear so what happens is when we start moving the things then start changing the things i'll be very honest even the interior designers not sure what we want even us interior designers are not sure what we want so please no so we are so, all in lost so, in this so why you are why you are not sure is because the directives are not clear had be at uh, the point is and when we if we are clear in our team and we have all the teams or the people working together maybe it's engineer interior designer construction team i'm saying why not to start everything from the day one when with the project is on the board only we start thinking on the points or the changes when we are 50% have done and that that is the issue which happens then we are not clear on the concepts then we go for the brandings and what is you know is being marketed we go for the things mostly by the branding which is the issues okay we are reserve is rather going and studying the practical things even in the previous uh, session also we said are we paying over pricing for the products are we paying low for the products actually we don't know what we require i can tell you the example few days back 
as, uh, I'm telling about somewhere in a 10 years back story, is that when we Samsung TV came with the new HD models, okay, and then by that time, that DG Valley has come up with a when you can synchronize all your product with a tab and etc. Then why I need the smart TV? When I'm synchronizing my all the things with a the tab, then I don't need a step. So my point is. Uh, I want to say something on this particular part. So uh, when uh, when the industry is moving, everybody in the, like uh, Viniji said that I want to innovate. Everybody is coming up with new things. So that's why the tab and the smart TV had to be simultaneously. But as a as a owner or as a brand, you should understand you have to pick up one of the products. You can't have two products. That is what the same usage. It is. It should be the brand. It should be decision taken by the owner and the brand collectively as to what they want to go for. They should not be like I want a smart TV and I want a tab board. It does not serve the purpose because as a consultant, when I'm doing my lighting, wiring, there, there may be a different command from the smart TV, and there can be a different command from the tab. So which one to take first? There is no master slave configuration in that. Absolutely, ma'am, you're so right. So that's why it should be very clear with the operator, and operator should, uh, the owner should also take consideration as to what the chief engineer has to contribute in that. The decisions are made by people who are not going to operate. The chief engineer should participate and say that these are the challenges I will face if there are two parallel systems. See, my point is most of our problems will resolve if we have a proper coordination amongst the players who are working on the team. That seems to be the summary of the day that the client, the consultant, the designer, and the end user. And the end user also. All sit down together because nobody seems to know anything. So we sit down together and at least that work out a direction. Even and then finally take That is what it is. I think that is the only solution we have. Have a proper coordination. Have and a the proper manufacturer, meetings. yes, of course. So finally, on that, on that note, I think we'll call it a day. It's been a long uh, session, and I think there's another session after this. So thank you, everyone. Thank you so much to the panelists. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for uh, such an informative, quick session. May I please request Heyman, sir, to hand over the mementos to the uh, speakers? Shruti Gupta. Mr. Vinay Gupta. Major General T.K. Chadda. Mr. Kaushik. Thank you so much for the session. We'll immediately start with the next session. We will be talking about the kitchen equipment standards, evolution and challenges. May I request Mr. Rajesh Chaudhary, founder, food service consultants association of India to please come up on the stage.